Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, world champion, European champion medalist and an Olympic athlete, Dervil O'Rourke is certainly one of Ireland's most successful sports people. Following her retirement in 2014, she channeled her competitive spirit into overcoming the hurdles of the business world. Dervil, you were certainly one of Ireland's most decorated athletes in recent times, but when you look back at your athletics career, what achievement are you most proud of? Thanks for having me. Gosh, that is an interesting question and it changes all the time. Like I'm retired 10 years now. When I first retired, probably being world champion, I, I kind of felt being able to put that next to my name was really big, like a really big, really big title to have and one that I felt like, okay, I'll always have been world champion. But now that I'm a little bit further out from it, I think for me, my career went on for about 12 years. I did three Olympic Games, five world championships. I think I won four European medals. So the longevity in that career and the fact that I, I kept it going for so long and, you know, anybody who is interested in sport will know that it's very much a roller coaster. Like, it's not, it's not a smooth career. It's something that you have to constantly be reacting to challenges, to problems, um, trying to go, okay, is there an opportunity here to do something? So... I look at it and I just know there were so many different phases through that career and there were so many times when I could have walked away and gone and done something different. So I think now definitely I look back and I go, you know what, I gave that a really good lash for a really good number of years and it was a brilliant place to be and it taught me so, so much. So that's probably what I'm the proudest of. Aside from the physical training itself, in your opinion, what personal traits enabled you to achieve success at the highest level? Yeah, that's that's a really good one because I look back and I do wonder because when I started out my career the the target I had was to get to the Olympic Games and that was lofty you know for a kid coming out of Cork trying to do an event like the 100 meter hurdle so I really really wanted to get to the Olympic Games but actually that ambition and that ceiling kept getting higher and higher and I think probably what stood to me the most outside of my bit of physical capability was I think I was good at getting really great people around me and bringing them with me. And I had so many people on that journey for 12 years that I could rely on, that I knew supported me and I knew that they were able to help me. Loads of people were experts in loads of different areas. And I I genuinely look back and I go, it was the team, it was this high performance team that made the difference. And I guess I was good at kind of being my own high performance manager where I would have sat down and I would have analysed like, and I actually do this in my own life all the time now still, all these years afterwards. Like I would have sat down every three to six months and I would have written out different areas and then I would have analysed, okay, what's working well in this area? It might have been nutrition, it could have been fitness, it might again have been like off-track activities and I would have just analysed that and then I would have tried to plug those holes and find people to help me. And in June 2014, you announced your decision to retire from athletics. Was this a decision that you made over a period of time or was there a particular event that made you realise that it's time to go? I had Achilles surgery in 2013. So I won my last medal in 2013. And when I won that medal, I won a bronze at a European Championship and I came off the last hurdle and I hurt my foot hurt my Achilles. I knew as soon as I came to the line, I thought, this is this feels different to other injuries I've had. And within a few months, I had a major, major surgery on that Achilles on my left leg. And I thought, right, okay, I, this isn't how I want to go out. I want to rehab. I want to get back. And I want to, I want to feel physically really good. So I rehabbed. I got back. It took about nine months. And I remember in June 2014, I went to the track. We set up hurdles. I ran over the hurdles felt good and I just remember that motivation like that mental side of it it was gone it just wasn't there and I think I had to prove to myself I could get back and I could cross hurdles and I could feel good but actually did I want to fight for medals did I want to target another Olympic Games like I didn't want to go for a fourth Olympic Games I was really happy to to walk away my body felt good my mind was good and I was also really excited about the opportunity to do other things I think because I had always been around this high performance environment and around all these experts, the idea of being able to take elements from that world and bring it into the non-sporting world, because I was seeing my friends who were working busy jobs and were doing all these kinds of things. I thought there's loads of stuff that sports people do that actually be really helpful for you in your day to day life. So for me, it was knowing that I could keep going if I wanted to and going, you know what, I actually don't want to. I want to do other things that make me excited and make me want to get out of bed in the morning. 
And of course, many people will know that you appeared on the hit series of Ireland's Fittest Family as a coach. But six years ago, you also entered the world of business. So how did you adapt to this new role? Yeah, it's been fascinating. No different to being a professional track athlete. It's an absolute roller coaster. So when I, I guess, put that business hat on, I felt really passionate about simple things that make people's lives a little bit better when it comes to well-being and feeling good. And I had this idea about digital. I'd written two successful cookbooks. I was on Ireland's Fittest Family. But I loved the idea of what can we do day to day to feel better? And who are the amazing experts that we can use? And how can we do that as part of the community? So all those, all those years I'd had as an athlete, like all those elements kept kind of coming together in my head to form an idea. And I'm, I'm fortunate that I have a great business partner, Greg O'Gorman. He's very... He's very business orientated and I remember explaining all my ideas to him and him saying, yeah, you know, I think you have something here. It's about putting it into a plan and figuring all that out. And for me, it's no different in many ways to when I was an athlete. I figure out, okay, what kind of what's the problem? I think for most people, and I'm certainly very like this, most people are really busy, but they know they want to do stuff that will help them feel a little bit better. And I think that reality, there's so much out there and it's so cluttered with information that if you are busy and you do have that intent to do something for your health to feel better, I think it being expert-led is really important. So very quickly, I started contacting and reaching out to experts I knew under different pillars. And then the final point of it, I was kind of going, I, it needs to have a community feel because you need to feel part of something. It's very hard if you feel isolated to stay motivated. So I guess, yeah, that business has so long as I care about what I'm doing I don't find it that hard to maybe wear that business hat but definitely a roller coaster and one that I'm really glad to be on. So how has Derville.ie been performing over the past six years and how did you go about building the community? Derville.ie has been amazing we've had over 15,000 members in six years which is incredible I remember when when we launched six years ago because it was six years ago that we put it all together and we decided to launch I remember when the first handful of people joined Derville.e, I was so delighted that people actually had that intent and that they what we were doing was speaking to them. So, so for me, it was about having the idea, but then it was about bringing really brilliant people on board. So Derville.e has always had experts involved. And that has been, to be honest, that has been a huge foundation of what, of what we've built now in terms of building the community aspect I think it's always been about people and it's always been about knowing that other people are in a similar situation to you and people generally want to help each other they want to feel good and you know finding that and it's used a lot now that word of kind of finding that tribe finding that community feeling supported but I do think it's massive I think it's a huge part of long-term health is feeling like you have people around you and like I look at even me and like for me to stay motivated like we're doing a challenge at the moment over on sale and it's called Santa Steppers and I go out and I do my steps every day because I don't want to let the other Santa Steppers down I don't want them to know that I have not done my steps today so I think it's all that kind of thing just feeling like you are part of something and feeling included is really important. And of course, you then realised recently that there was an opportunity in the business-to-business space for a workplace wellbeing solution. So you launched Sale. Talk to us about that and how you identified a niche in the market for it. When we started servicing wellbeing with with a digital platform, um, we would have had a lot of requests over the years from businesses to do to do projects for them in workplace wellbeing and we we did a little bit of it but we always we always felt so passionate about what we were doing that we didn't have maybe enough time whereas then we came through covid and we just saw all the difficulties people had through covid and how important well-being has become in the workplace i think we've gone from thinking well-being is just for an individual to go home to figure out to know actually well well-being flows through your entire day whether that's getting up in the morning getting your breakfast being busy with the kids going into work like well-being isn't something that you can switch on and off it is your entire day so for us that became very apparent in covid then coming out the other side of that we did we did research we looked at a lot of research um we looked at from UCC in Cork and then we also did research in our own community and interestingly we we did an interview like a thousand 
a thousand members who had used our service and had used stuff under the different pillars that we have in wellbeing. And 68% of them, I think, said to us, no, I don't have anything in work. And if I did have something in work that was like what you already do, but in maybe some slightly different ways, I would absolutely use it. So for us, it was very much led by what people were telling us that they actually wanted. And I think that has been that has been massive for us, like just listening to what people's kind of pain points are in their busy lives and what they have time for and what actually they don't have time for and what, what they're willing to engage in has been massively important. So provide us with an insight into the services that you're going to be offering through this new workplace wellbeing solution. Yeah, so on on sale we have we have different we have different pillars. So we have fitness, financial, nutrition, mindfulness, career development, mental well being, work life balance and we do a few different things. So we deliver on-demand content, but we also deliver live content and we deliver events because they're really engaging for us. And then we work with like brilliant experts who come on and they talk people through the really practical and simple things that they can do. And I think for us with Sale, it's about having, having enough information that is usable for people, that's interesting for people. And, you know, one person might be really interested in aspects of fitness, like we know our Pilates or yoga, those, those are all really popular where they're on demand or live. Then you can have someone else who's really interested in that financial well-being pillar. So for us, it's about having really lovely pillars that really, really help people. Then having brilliant experts that are super engaging, really qualified and then actually having the community come in behind it because one of the things we learned from being in this for the past five years is you can have you can have lots of content and lots of stuff, but actually if people aren't on there, aren't looking, you need that really vibrant community. And we're lucky already on already on sale, we have a really lovely, vibrant community of people over there who are using it, who are engaging. Like I mean, there's messages going up probably every every fifteen to twenty minutes and they're across those areas, those different areas that we have. Um, the messages are about so for me you know when you go onto the platform it's really user friendly and it's just a really nice place to be it takes the tech was really important to get the tech right and I think we've done a huge amount in getting the tech right so that people want to actually log on that it only takes them a few seconds and once they're in there they feel like oh, okay that's interesting there's somebody here and they're talking about you know doing a walking challenge somebody else might be talking about you know they might be interested in a weight loss support group because we have groups on there as well. So it's a really broad service with something that pulls in the vast majority of people in different areas. And then, I mean, the foundation absolutely is the community and the people on there because they make it what it is. And what's driving the demand for this service from companies? Is it increased productivity or is it increased employee retention or something else? That's an interesting question because I think it depends on the company. If you are an employer, you're thinking of it, I think, in two ways. First, you're thinking, I want to make sure that the brilliant people I have stay and that I'm showing them that I am doing something for them that really positively helps their well-being. And then I think the other hat you have on is if you're trying to if you're trying to get new people and you're trying to hire, I think you have to show that you are looking at that area of well-being, that it's, you're not just looking for what a person's going to bring to you in terms of productivity, because actually if their well-being is in a good place and if you're doing positive measures towards their well-being, you know the productivity will be higher. So I do think the well-being piece has become massive and it's only growing all the time. And I think as people, like for me, I'm very aware of my own well-being, but I'm also like, we have we've a lovely small business, like a small Irish business that we service this market, but I'm very conscious that everyone in our business, that they're in a good place with their well-being and what can we do? What are the small things we can do? And I think often, often it's not as huge a task as maybe people think it is. And it is about doing something as simple as, say, getting our platform and providing that to your employees and just showing them that actually you do see them as people and that you know their well-being is really important. Derville, Sale has recently secured a €200,000 in funding from Enterprise Ireland. What is this going to be used for? Yeah, so getting a recent amount of funding, funding from EI was a massive boost for us because this is a business that we started from scratch a few years ago really with that basic idea of what can we do to help people and being able to announce that Enterprise Ireland are supporting us, like, 
honestly, it took us a really long time to get to that point with it. Um, there was a lot, there's a lot of different elements that go into it. And we kept coming back to the fact of like, how can we just do a good job to support people? So for us, it'll, it helps us in, with employment, which is amazing. And it helps us just fund our business plans. And we put a lot of time into those business plans. About 18 months ago to two years ago, we sat down, we looked at everything we've done to date, and we thought, how can we really go at this and make a difference? And getting EI on board with that bit of funding just really, really helps with that vision that we have about being, you know, the absolute leading workplace wellbeing provider in the country and ultimately beyond because we do have ambition to to go go beyond Ireland as well. But Ireland's such an important place for us and obviously being an Irish company, being a core company, you know, we wanna we really want to serve us brilliant companies here here first and then then go beyond. But I think it feels like we're kind of on that first rung of the ladder with EI supporting us. And Durval, at the beginning of this interview, we spoke about the importance of a good team surrounding you in the world of athletics when it came to coaching and, of course, nutrition and everything else. Have you tried to recreate that in the business world? I think you can never go too far away from what worked really well for you in one area. And I know, I know the vast majority of my success was I surrounded myself with incredible people and I was really passionate about what I did. And it's no different when it comes to to sale. We're, we have incredible people working with the business. And then even in our office, like everyone who works in our office really, really cares about people getting some valuable information that helps them feel good. Like they really, really genuinely care. And I think once you don't go too far away from that, I think you're doing something right. And I, I really feel there's gorgeous soul in our company and in what we do. And we're very proud of it. And hopefully we'll just keep building. And Erville, finally, from excelling on the track to achieving success in the business world, what's next for Derville O'Rourke? Do you know what? The business world is somewhere where I'm really enjoying. And for me, I just want to work with lots of brilliant people in the workplace wellbeing space, lots of brilliant companies, and to make a difference. It's as simple as that. Like, how can we, how can we make a difference? What can we do that makes a difference to people in their day-to-day lives through through that workplace space so it's to just keep doing this keep doing it well and keep delivering well if you've just tuned in that was Dervil O'Rourke from Sale and I'd like to thank Dervil for sharing her sporting and business highlights with us this morning Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick